Are you spending the majority of your time in Rust farming? Only just to have to go back to your base and spend hours manually processing your resources? Having to use all of your free time staying in base to make sure you're cranking out the metal and sulfur that you need and then having to craft it into the items you need for the wipe? All of that precious time wasted. All that time you could be out of base, getting resources and PvPing. If only you could drop off your resources at your base and it would do it all for you. Well, do I have a video for you? Welcome, today we're going to be revolutionizing the way you craft and smelt items with the magic of automation. Say goodbye to tedious manual labor and hello to efficiency. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to set up an automatic crafting and smelting system in Rust. I'll be guiding you through the video step by step. Picture this, a base that not only saves you time and effort, but also ensures your furnaces and crafting benches are always at their peak. Now. Let's get started by going through the required items for this impressive setup. Now it might seem like a lot, but trust me, it's totally worth it. To kickstart this project, you'll need to gather the following items. Four root combiners, four splitters, two power branches, one large battery, one switch, six electric furnaces, four industrial conveyors, one industrial crafter, nine storage adapters, five solar panels, one wiring tool, and a pipe tool. If you're worried about farming all of these items, fear not. You can obtain most of them from the outpost using scrap. And I've already got you covered with that with a dedicated video on the best scrap farming method in Rust. You'll find the link in the top right corner of your screen. Or simply just visit my channel. Now that you know what you need and where to require it, it's time to develop into the base build itself. Remember, the size of the base is flexible. Just keep in mind that larger bases may require more resources and upkeep for construction. Without further ado, let's jump into the exciting base build. Hello everyone, I hope you are well. I'll be starting this video with the base first. Now you can choose whatever style of base do you like. It doesn't have to be this style of base. It can be anything that you want. All it has to do is accommodate to the stuff that we're gonna fit inside of it. So if you wanna use the base that I'm doing currently here, there is already a video on my channel. This is one of the bunker base videos that I actually made recently. I'm gonna to link to this video on the top right hand corner of the screen right now. And if you wanna check that one out, go ahead. It's a really good base and I highly recommend it. Anyways, I'm gonna speed this part of the video up as I don't wanna waste anybody's time. So I'll get back to you once it's done. Now what you're going to do is you're going to place a splitter there and that is going to be able to let you use this battery for more than just the automatic crafting. You want to go connect the output of the large battery to the splitter. Now what you're going to do is you want to go on the outside of your base and you want to make your way to the top. I usually like to place a triangle foundation out the outside of the base temporarily to be able to get on the roof. Once we've made our way onto the top of the roof, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to grab our solar panels. Now these solar panels need to be orientated towards the north direction on the top of your compass. What that there will allow is the sun to charge these solar panels as best as possible, the most optimum. Now this is going to help with charging your battery faster as well as keeping the charge longer without it depleting during the day. 
Now that more than most likely won't happen due to the power that this system will be using. But like as before, when we had the splitter set up so you could use the battery for more than just this system, you would probably want to have these in this orientation for that purpose. Now what you want to go do is you want to start to connect your solar panels to the recombiners as I'm doing here. And now we just want to follow this process and repeat the steps as follows. Alright, now that you got that out of the way, you can see the battery is getting charged by the solar panels. Alright, it's time to place down the switch. After placing down the switch, you want to follow it by placing a splitter. Then what you want to do is you want to grab the output from the switch and place it on the input of the splitter. What this allows us to do is control when we want our crafting system to be turned on and off as well as the smelting system. Then you want to grab the electrical input on the switch and then you want to connect it to the original splitter that we set up earlier, to one of the outputs. Now, we've got the basic core functionality of our crafting automatic smelting system down pat. What you want to go do next is place two electrical branches. What these two electrical branches are going to control are the crafting as well as the automation for the smelting process. Now, you want to connect two outputs from the splitter to two inputs on the branches, as I'm doing in the video. The next thing that we'll be doing is attaching storage adapters to our boxes and our furnaces. This here allows industrial connections to pass items through and out of these machines, containers, etc. You're going to need to place these on all the boxes that you want to use, as well as all of the furnaces that you would like to use. Now we want to configure the power of the branches. Set 1 to 18 and 1 to 16. The 18 one is what we'll be using for the furnaces. The 16 one is what we'll be using for the crafters. You want to set two splitters near your furnace system. After you've set those splitters down, you want to go back to the 18 branch and you want to grab the branch out and power out and connect them to each one of your splitters, as I do in the video. Now from here, we want to connect these power outs on the splitters to the power in on our furnaces. This is a pretty rinse and repeat process, so I'll just let this play. Alright, now we got the power system set up for the furnaces, we want to set up the iron conveyors. You can go ahead and turn off the power for the furnaces for now. Place two iron conveyors near the furnace system and then one near the loot boxes where you want the items to go. So we have two industrial conveyors that they'll be making our furnace system work. We have one that will be putting loot into the furnaces and one they'll be taking out. Okay? So what you want to go do is you want to first connect all of your furnaces up. Now once you connect all your furnaces up, you'll have a furnace, you'll, sorry, you'll have an industrial input, industrial input, and an industrial output. What you want to do is connect the industrial input to the output on one of your item conveyors, industrial conveyors, sorry. And then you want to connect the output of the furnace system to the input on an industrial conveyor. So what do I mean by this? As you look in the video, we have industrial input right there. What that they will be transferring is the loot from out of the furnaces. So this includes cooked sulfur, cooked metal ore, etc. Okay, you want to make sure that the output of the furnaces is connected to the input on the industrial conveyor, vice versa. Now that we've got the output all configured, it is pretty simple to connect the input into the furnace. We connect the output of one of our industrial conveyors into the input of our furnace system. So this will be the start of your furnace system. The, imp the loot will come through there, work its way down, all the way through those pipes, and then work its way out. But now we need to set up the route for the loot to actually come through. So what you need to do for this here to work, you need to have a storage adapter on a box. And you the storage adapter will only show industrial output if you're connecting it to an input from an industrial conveyor. Next, you want to set up the output for where you want your loot to go. 
Now, when you're connecting the output on an industrial conveyor to a storage adapter, it will only highlight the input option. So you can't get these mixed up. So you don't need to worry about having these back to front. Rust has programmed it so that you cannot mess it up. It will highlight the only option that you can use when using inputs and outputs. So you don't need to stress about that too much. Now that we've got that there set up, what we want to do is we want to get the power from one of our industrial conveyors and connect it to our second branch that we set up earlier. You want to round it however you like. I like to be nice and neat with my cabling, but it doesn't really matter in the end. You want to route it down to this second branch and you want to connect it just like that. What we want to do from there is we want to grab the electrical pass through that Rust has built in when using electrical components. This allows us to pass the electricity through components without needing a without needing a splitter or another branch. So you just want to connect that power to the input on the other systems as I'm doing in the video. Just like that. Now if we turn the system on, everything should be on. Now it won't work as of yet. You need to create filters on what these industrial conveyors can actually accept and return. So for the input on the furnace system, we want to select all of the ores that we'll be smelting. So that's metal, that's sulfur, and high quality metal. And now we want the output to only return cooked sulfur, cooked metal, and cooked tyquil. If you don't specify this, nothing should come through. Just like that. Now we will place some ores in this box and let's test it out, eh? Turn them on. They should start to work. You should see the screen start to go. Those little green dots means that it's working. And there you go. You see the industrial conveyor push stuff out. And if we waited long enough, we'll be able to see it pull it in from that top one. That's the smelting part of the system down pat. Now let's move on to the crafting. Now when choosing a workbench, it really all depends on what you want to craft. I'll get to that in a second. But once you place your workbench down, you want to place your industrial crafter on top of the workbench. It should just automatically snap on. Place it in whichever position works best for you in your workshop. Now to be able to power the industrial crafter, you want to grab the pass through on one of the other either conveyors that you set up earlier. Now you want to plug that on the input power on the industrial crafter. Now that we've set up the power part of that system, we need to be able to set up for it to be able to actually get items. So that other industrial crafter that we set up earlier, we're going to connect the industrial input from the industrial crafter to the industrial output on the industrial conveyor, just like so in the video. And then from the industrial input, we want to connect that to the box that we had the items coming out of the furnaces to. So the box that holds the furnace resources, we want to connect that same output from the item conveyor to the industrial converter, which will then go to the industrial crafter. Now, depending on what you're crafting is what you're going to set your filters to. Now, for this example, I'll be crafting some gunpowder and some 5.56 ammo, as seen in the video. But you will need to adjust your filters accordingly to what you want to craft. Now, to actually be able to tell the item crafter what you want, you're actually going to need BPs of those corresponding items, e.g. 5.56 ammo and gunpowder. As you just seen in the video, I had 5.56 ammo and gunpowder as BPs and then put those into the item crafter. Now, without this, it won't know what to craft, so they are a necessity. Again, if you're low on scrap, check out my scrap farming video in the link in the description below. Now we want to actually set up the return item conveyor from the crafter output. So you want to connect the industrial output from the crafter into a new box that you want those resources to go into as followed in the video. It's the same process as setting up all the other item conveyors as before. Pretty straightforward. If you need to get refreshed on this process, just rewind back to earlier in the video on how I explained to do it. Here, you will need to set the filters for the updated items. Examples, you would need to add 5.56 and gunpowder as filtered items that the item conveyor can accept the input into the box. Now, if we turn all of this on, we will see that the items start to craft. As you see right here, there you go. You see that little bar light up? It goes from green to red. 
that means the items are crafting. It's exactly what we want. We can see the resources are being pulled in and resources are being pulled out. The metal frags, gunpowder are being pulled in and then it's outputting into our box as we want. And there you have it guys, a fully automatic smelting and crafting system in Rust. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. This video took me a long time to make and it did require a lot of effort. I hope you all enjoy and if you don't mind leaving a comment below as well as a like and even consider subscribing, it would be a great help to my channel. I really appreciate the love and support that's been shown on my channel recently and I will continue to improve my videos as well as continue to produce them. Thank you everybody for who's sticking around with my journey. I really do appreciate it and I hope to bring everybody more great content soon. Peace.